Hey guys, in the last tutorial we created our entity class, and in this one we have created an entity manager. Basically, the entity manager is what is what could be managing the entity class to make it really simple. And basically, yeah, that's what a manager is, right? It just manages something, so it will manage our entity class. So let's create a, a class or add a class. Call it entity manager. And call it right this time, or me. Alright, in here we'll include the entity file, entity.h. Alright, and we will call our, we'll create an object. Of entity. I don't know what it means. Ent entity. Entity. Um, entities. We'll have an array of max entities. And we'll define it up here. Number defined. Max entities. And put 250 for now. You could change it to any number. But I'm pretty sure we'll not go over 250. Or depending on your game, actually. And we will have a function int new entity. This class will 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 get our our a new entity from from inside the array. You'll see it once we will create it. Passing the width int width or end height. All the all the sprite. And we'll go to public. And we'll have a getter function. Actually, we'll do that getter function at the end. Let's call it update. Pass in a, a float. DT. DT. And a render. And pass in the position. A vector 3 position. And the getter function that I was talking about earlier, it will return an entity, entity pointer, and we'll get our entity. And in that one, you'll also pass in the int width and height. And that's it for our header file. Well, let's go to the CPP file. Inside the constructor, call do a for loop. Int i equals zero. I is less than max entities. And in here we'll set the ID to be zero for all entities. That means I mean zero. I mean I mean negative one. And negative one means that it's, that it's, it's it's dead, I guess. And that's it for a constructor. In here we'll create our new entity. So int entity manager. new entity create a local burial call it temp id or whatever you want to call it it will return the number in that array or if you want to change it to a different one probably put a current entity I guess so this is not really an id And we'll do a for loop that will loop through our array. And 
And we'll say if entities i get id does not equal negative one, that means it's alive. Negative one, make sure it's negative one. Then we'll continue. Other than that, we'll initialize it. With the width and height. And we'll set the ID to be one. I mean, not one, I mean, not one. Hold on a second. Yeah, I set it to one, actually. And we'll set the current entity. To equal the I. We'll break, we'll break out a for loop, and return the current entity. Well, basically, all right, this is f for the function, and basically, it was right here. It's going to the each through the array and checking if it's not alive, and if it's not alive, it'll initialize it and set the ID to to one. And we'll set the current entity to equal the i, and we'll return that. So that will be the 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 number in the array that will be initialized to it. Okay, and our then we'll have our getter function, entity pointer. get entity I don't want to I don't want to write the whole thing and we'll return the reference of entity entities and we'll pass in the new entity function and pass in the width and height so it's gonna go through here like I mentioned and it's gonna go here go through the array and return the the number in the array and set it to the entities <clears throat> and here we'll have an update function And look through the array. And say if m entities dot get id You know what? Oh, okay, alright. That's not equal negative one. Then we'll update it. And I was thinking about it. Right here when and go back to your new entity function. Inside the when you set the ID, set it to I. It doesn't always have to be one, but as long as it's not negative one and and, and that means it'll be alive. Well that'll be better sending it to I because it'll tell us what entity number it'll be on it. What entity number it it is when you call it. 
So that's my mistake right there. But then that's it for our update function. And our last function is the render. Which will loop through through our array. And if it's not negative one, if that is not negative one, they update, I mean render it. And that's it for our entity class, this is what we'll manage it. And one thing we have to do real quick in our entity class, since you you haven't noticed the constructor is protected, and that means we will not be able to get it here. So the only way will the entity manager get the constructor from the entity is to call it a friend class in the public. So I'll call it friend class and pass in the name of the class entity manager. In this way, this class will be able to call this constructor when the entity object is being called. I think we have to pass and include the. We we'll have to include our, our entity manager header file. And that's what the friend class is doing. One of the reasons why you will use a friend class. And that's it for our entity manager. Let's see real quick. We got some errors. Entity. I might have misspelled it. Yes, of course. Always I misspell something. Am I missing something? Alright guys, uh, actually you know what, don't include the, the entity manager header file, just delete it, we don't need it, that's all the reason why I was getting errors, but yeah that's what the friend class is be doing, is so I'll be able to get the constructor, but yeah, like I said, this is, this is it for the, uh, our class, and this is it for our engine for DirectX. I'll make another video after this one. Uh, and I'll show you how to use this class or this engine, I guess. And I'll show you. And since we haven't drawn anything in the screen, the screen is black at the moment. But I will be drawing something in the next um, video, so I could show you guys that it will it will work. So I'll see you guys then, alright?